Bonjour guys, today let's demystify the FK Icon logic in Controry in Unreal Engine 5. Lots of you have been asking about it, so I wanted to make a video dedicated to just that, to help you build your own system. Thanks again for your support guys, the community keeps growing and more and more people are joining the channel, which is super super cool. Don't forget to subscribe, it's very important and it motivates me to create new content for you guys. Now let's dive in. So as you probably guessed, both IK and FK systems are really useful and any animator wants to be able to use either one with ease. That's why we usually implement what we call an FK IK switch, meaning that at any moment during the animation process, I can choose which sole guy I want, forward or inverse, and animate accordingly. Let's go. First, let's create the basic controls, like the roots and the pelvis, for example. For this video, we'll focus on one arm. We can create the FK controls binary here, based on the upper arm, lower arm, and hand. Just select the bones and, with right click, choose Create Controls as usual. I've made several videos covering the basics of this, mainly with our buddy Mr. Dewey's. I put the links in the description, feel free to check them out. For the IK controls, you can also do it manually or use the procedural function, like the one I set up in my previous video with Mali. For IK, we need one control at the end of the chain we want to drive and a ball vector at mid-length of the chain to control the initial bend or orientation. Alright, that's the setup part done. Now let's focus on the switch itself by first defining the FK and IK solve. Everything's going to happen in the forward solve. For the FK solve, we're going to use a function already available to us, FK chains. We define the bones and controls via an item array, which you can easily create by selecting the items you want in the rig hierarchy and dragging and dropping them into the graph, then picking the right function. Let's do that for the root and pelvis control and then for the arm chain. The sequence node will help us keep everything organized here. For the IK solve, we'll use the two bone IK function again. It's really handy and easy to set up. Just make sure to configure the primary and secondary axis correctly to avoid any weird twists in your chain. And that's it. We now have both our FK and IK systems. We can plug them in and quickly test each one to make sure everything is working properly. Now, let's move on to setting up the actual switch between FK and IK. To handle that logic, we're going to use a simple branch node. This will let us choose what to execute based on a true or false condition. In our case, that's whether we want to use FK or IK. To control this switch in the sequencer, we'll need a specific type of control called an animation channel. This kind of control can be keyframed directly on the timeline, making it super practical during animation. But to create one, we need to parent it to an existing control. A good starting point is the root control. So we we'll right click on it, create a new control and change its type to a bool. Now we can drag this bool control into our graph and plug it into the condition inputs of our branch node. Since the default bool value is set to false, the false pin will be triggered first. So let's use that as our default setup. For example, by blocking in the IK logic there. And then we connect the FK logic into the true pin. With just that setup, we now have a basic working FK IK switch. It already works inside the control rig asset window, and if you select the root control, you found the Boolean animation channel we just added. By docking it on or off, you can switch between FK and IK and this also works directly in Sequencer. However, there are still a few limitations. For instance, the controls from the inactive system are still visible, and the controls from the inactive system don't follow the one being used. So if you're animating in IK, your IFK controls won't follow, and vice versa. And that can become a problem when you want to switch mid-animation. Let's start by fixing the issue where FK controls don't follow the IK solve, and vice versa. To do that, we simply loop through each FK control and use a node called project to new parents. This tells Unwall that we want the FK control to follow the bones they were originally created from, like the upper arm, the lower arm, and hand. So we loop through the FK controls, get the associated bones they're based on, and use project to new parents, setting the controls at the child and the bones at the old and the new parent. Once that's done, we we'll reset the control transform so everything lines up correctly.
Now if you move the IK controls, you will see that all the FK controls follow them. That solves one side of the problem. For the IK side, it's even simpler. We can use a parent constraint node. Set the IK hand control as a child and the hand bond as a parent. You can place the logic just after the FK chain setup here, and once it's done, try pausing using the FK controls first. You'll see that the IK controls now follow the FK solve perfectly. And I know what you're thinking. What about the ball vector? Can that be synced too? Yes, absolutely, but that's a bit more complex. You typically parent the ball vector to a null and use something like a compute ball vector node to place it correctly through the construction events. That's definitely doable, but maybe a bit beyond the scope of this walkthrough. Let me know if you want a dedicated video for that part. Let's stick to simple and effective example here. And now let's deal with visibility. We try to make sure that we only show the controls for the system that's active. That way we keep everything clean and readable for the animator. Unreal provides a helpful function called hide controls. It's essentially a loop that goes through an array of controls and sets their visibility. We'll use it twice, once for the FK logic and once for the IK logic. For each one, we'll define an item array listing the controls we want to affect. In the FK setup, we want the FK controls to be visible, so you make sure the boolean value is set to show them. Then for the IK setup, we just invert the values, show the IK controls, and hide the FK ones. And that's it. Now you've got not just a working FK IK switch, but one that handles visibility cleanly and keeps the inactive system in sync with the active one. Let's keep going from there. We're almost there. You can go ahead and test and you'll see that it works well. I mean, almost. Because if we try to switch between FK and IK mid-animation, right on the same track, you'll probably notice some weird behavior. Things don't line up properly and it starts to jitter or snap unexpectedly. That's the tricky part. And trust me, a lot of people get stuck here. I did too at first. So how do we fix that? There's a really effective way to handle this by using a node called send events. What this does is basically tell Unreal to fire off a auto key anytime we make a change whether it's in the FK controls, the IK controls, or the switch itself. It helps keep everything refreshed and updated automatically. With this in place, we can switch between FK and IK on the fly without worrying about broken transitions or messy behavior. Here's how to set it up. First, I'm going to add an extra pin to the sequence node we've already been using. Then I add another sequence node to keep everything organized and clean inside the graph. Now we need to handle all three components, FK, IK, and the switch. So we'll end up with three pins and three separate send event nodes. Starting with IK, we use a for each node and plug in, in the array that holds the IK controls. That includes the IK hand and the pole vector. Then we connect each item from the loop into a send event node. Same thing for the FK controls. Just loop through them and plug them into their own send event node. And by the way, these parts can easily be turned into a function if you want to keep things organized. That's what I talked about in my last video don't forget to check it out. I'm leaving it expanded here so it's easier to follow what's actually happening. As for the switch control, we don't need to loop anything. We can define it directly into a send event nodes just like that. And that's all you need to ensure smooth switching between FK and IK inside the sequencer. Now, when you test it live, you'll see that everything works without those weird jumps or snapping issues. To sum a bit everything here, the core idea is that we use a branch node that checks our boolean animation channel. That's a little switch we created earlier. Depending on its value, we activate either the FK or IK logic. We also control the visibility of the FK and IK controls, so only the relevant one is showing. Then we handle the solving of each system just like we normally would. The matching parts make sure the unused system follows along properly. IK to FK is super simple, 
FK2IK just needs a few extra nodes. And finally, to keep the whole thing rock solid inside the sequencer, we fire off those send event nodes to keep everything synced with auto keying. And just like that, you're officially a switch master. And that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it will help you demystifying the FKIK switch in Unreal Engine. See you next week for a new one. Ciao.